This is News 8 This Morning. Good morning to you on this Monday. I'm Stella Escobedo. Hope you enjoyed your weekend. Heather Myers joins us at home. Did you have a good weekend? I did have a good weekend and you know Stella we were just chatting about that back to school shopping story. Yes. I tell you what when I was at Target the other day the loneliest aisle there was all the school supplies which typically has parents and students with lists in their hand filling their cart up. I thought oh man what a difference this year. I'm thinking my idea is to move the back to school shopping over to the wine aisle because <laughs> parents will probably be stocking up there than on paper and pencils this school year. Boy, you're not kidding. It's going to be an interesting year. So yeah, we will talk more about Sweetwater Union and we'll uh, let you know what that's looking like, maybe a precursor to other districts as well. So in the meantime, though, we're going to get right into our headlines. We begin with this. This morning, we know the identities of all of the service members involved in a training accident off of our coast, including one Marine who died at the hospital. Seven other Marines are now and one sailor now all presumed dead. News 8's Netta Rompor is live at Camp Pendleton with the very latest on what is now a recovery mission, Netta. Yeah, such an unfortunate update to what happened here. There was, of course, that training accident Thursday evening, and they have been searching for more than 40 hours, some 1,000 nautical square miles of search, and that search now turning into a recovery mission where they are now looking for the bodies of those who are presumed dead. A total of nine victims in this accident, and let's show you their names now. The Marine Corps releasing these names late last night. Lance Corporal Guillermo Perez, 20 years old of New Bronzeville, pronounced dead at the scene before being transported to Scripps Memorial in La Jolla last week. He was a rifleman, also presumed dead. Private First Class Brian Baltiera, 19 years old of Corona, California. Lance Corporal Marco Barranco, 21 of Montebello. Private First Class Evan Bath, 19 years old of Oak Creek, Wisconsin. And U.S. Navy Hospitalman Christopher Nem, just 22 years old of Stockton, California. Also, Private First Class Jack Ryan Ostrovsky, 21 years old from Bend, Oregon. Corporal Wesley Rod, 23 of Harris, Texas. Lance Corporal Chase Sweetwood, 19 years old out of Portland, Oregon. And Corporal Cesar Villanueva, 21 years old from Riverside. So those ages you can hear right there, 19 to 23 years old, very young service members. There are GoFundMe pages set up for a couple of them. We want to show those to you. Loved ones did identify Wesley Rod on this GoFundMe page. One of those Marines killed. We're told he just became a new dad in May. Many condolences have been posted for him online. Also killed in the accident, Marine Chase Sweetwood. There's a GoFundMe page for him. And his aunt writes that he died the day before his 19th birthday. She also wrote, our families beyond devastated. Chase was one of the good ones in his life, his life taken far too soon. She says, no mother should have to bury their child. Please keep them in, their thought, in your thoughts. Meanwhile, there are eight other Marines who survived this accident. Five of them are doing okay. They were rescued that Thursday. Two others, though, in the hospital. That does include 22 year old Dalex Truxel. We had a chance to speak with his aunt, and here's what she says about him. Since he was a little kid, I can remember um, doing birthday cakes for him, and he wanted it to have Marines decorations on it when he was seven or eight. He's always dreamed of being a Marine. Truxo managed to make it out alive. He was airlifted to the hospital and he remained in the intensive care unit until Saturday. His parents are now at his bedside as he recovers there at Scripps Memorial. Now, again, as we mentioned, they were on a training mission on board an amphibious assault vehicle, also known as an AAV, just off of San Clemente Island. When for some reason that amphibious assault vehicle stopped, it began taking on water. The Marine Corps saying it, they saw it sink there. So Five Marines were rescued. They were brought aboard the USS Somerset. And then ever since then, they were searching throughout the waters, the Marine Corps, the Navy, the Coast Guard, helicopters, ships, many watercraft out there searching since Thursday. But like we mentioned, this has now turned into a recovery mission. They are going to be continuing their search, but for their bodies. And that's the very latest live here at Camp Pendleton. We'll send it back to you. Now, thank you. We are also learning that one of those servicemen, a hospital corpsman, Christopher Gem, who was from Stockton, a friend identified him as one of the missing servicemen that passed this weekend, uh, confirmed yesterday. The sailor was a former 2016 graduate of Lincoln High School in Stockton. 
He always loved and he loved basketball and judo. Other social media posts commented on how Gem was a young, caring man, funny, humble, and always smiling. Well, some good news this morning. For the first time in over a week, no new community coronavirus outbreaks reported here in San Diego County. But with 37 outbreaks last week, we are still more than five times the trigger of seven outbreaks. More than 5,600 tests were reported yesterday. About 5% came back positive. That's just below the two-week average of 5.3%. There were no new deaths reported. At this point, the death toll remains at 565. A bipartisan agreement on a new stimulus package seems unlikely when negotiations resume today. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin had a round of meetings over the weekend. Their main sticking point was the extension of enhanced unemployment benefits. Pelosi says the $600 price is not a deal breaker for Democrats. Mnuchin suggested that unemployment be tied to some percentage of wages, not a flat number. Families in the Sweetwater Union High School District are getting ready to turn the page on a new chapter. We would normally say it's back to school, but it's back to the computer for many of them. Yeah, learning will look a lot different thanks to the pandemic. News 8's Chris Grow outside Eastlake High School to explain. Chris, good morning. Good morning, Heather. And look, things are going to look different at all the districts. But one thing that we're seeing kind of happen quite frequently is the districts are identifying key dates where they're going to take a look back at everything and decide whether or not distance learning will continue. Now, Sweetwater Union High School District has set key dates as well. They've said, look, school is going to start today uh, as far as distance learning is concerned and it's going to carry on distance wise until October 2nd. Now, for I say that for now because this is where those key dates come in. The district will look at county public health data and recommendations and then reassess their situation or potentially how distance learning was going uh, on dates such as September 21st, November 30th and March 1st. Now, as for how this will look for students, there will be live online learning and previously recorded work by teachers or lesson plans and they will kind of get a mix of both synchronous and asynchronous learning. Attendance will be kept and grading will happen. We're also told that every student will get a device. Now we spoke with a teacher that works here at East Lake, East Lake High School about the process and this is what he told us when we spoke to him about potentially some of the challenges uh, that teachers uh, have experienced but then also maybe some of the things that have gone well when it comes to training for this moment and if they need the you know the, the internet stability or the, the better uh you know level of internet speed or the, the, the materials and the resources that they have within our classroom I, I i like the option and the flexibility that is there but for now i'm going to be uh here be based here at home until perhaps i need to go And so he was talking there how it's going to be different from back in the March where teachers have the opportunity to come back to the classrooms uh, in order to do their distance learning from the actual physical school sites. Now, after school activities will be virtual as well, but athletic events have been postponed until December. Heather Stella. All right, Chris, thank you. Here at News 8, we want to bring you into the conversation about reopening schools. So what questions do you have for the people who will be deciding whether to open classrooms this fall? Text your questions to the number on your screen, 858-571-8888. Again, that number is 858-571-8888. And we will have the answers to your questions in an upcoming back to school special. Stella. And time now for the morning rush. A death investigation is underway after a man died in the street in Middletown. It happened yesterday afternoon on Columbia Street near Sassafras. Witnesses say a man was taking off his clothes and vandalizing a car. Officers arrived to find the man lying on the pavement in medical distress. The man was handcuffed as a precaution, but once officers saw the man was not breathing, they took the handcuffs off and began performing CPR. He died at the scene. A temporary area restriction around the La Mesa Police Department is no longer in effect after a protest over the weekend. A couple of hundred people started protesting the Black Lives Matter movement. 
began peacefully. This was a, a rally near police headquarters, but then an opposing group reportedly there to support police also arrived. Police say they arrested one person at the time. And police need your help finding a missing teen considered at risk. This is Nevea Corbin. She goes by Marie. She's 14. She was last seen yesterday in Carmel Valley. Corbin was wearing a tank top, black leggings, and a pink and black Apple Watch. She has black hair, blue eyes, five foot eight. If you see her, you're asked to call San Diego police right away. Federal help is on the way to battle that wildfire that continues to burn in northern Riverside County. It's called the Apple Fire. It's burned more than 20,000 acres since it started on Friday afternoon. Cal Fire says it's 5% surrounded and nearly 80,000 people have been told to evacuate in an area called Cherry Valley. Dry brush is helping to fuel the fire with flames spreading up hills, overtaking a neighborhood and coming close to one man's home. Yeah, it was insanely close. I mean, I could feel the heat basically, but I mean, it was close enough that I thought that the house and everything in it was going to go down. Well, Governor Gavin Newsom has secured a fire management assistance grant from FEMA. It will free up more than more firefighting resources, covering up to 75% of the costs of responding agencies. More than 1,200 firefighters, including a local strike team from right here in San Diego, are helping to fight the flames. Well, still to come here this morning, we have uh, we may take just a little bit longer now to learn who could be Joe Biden's potential running mate. We'll have more on that story straight ahead. Plus, what is the future of that popular app called TikTok? A lot of people are asking because the president mentioned a possible ban on the app. We spoke to some experts and we're getting their thoughts. <laughs> And a vigil held in memoriam of Glee actress Naya Rivera. Why fans say she was more than just an actress. That's straight ahead.